Right, next. Um, so let's talk about the uh, PKI system structure. Okay. First of all, let's talk about why do we need the uh, PKI, yeah, public key uh, infrastructure. Um, let's assume we have a user called user A, and we have a, another user here called user B. Um, and uh, user C is something which we don't like. Okay, you can call C as maybe a cracker, or maybe C as a hacker. All right. Um, so let's say. Um, what happens if we send something uh, from user A to user B over internet without any encryption? So we call this plain text, right? So what is the problem when you send uh, something without any encryption? Of course, uh, the data between user A and the user B may be stolen or may be altered by user C. Okay, so this is the, the first scenario. Alright, so anything which is uh, sent by user A to user B and uh, whenever you go, we send anything go through internet. There's we will expect there's a lot of uh, router hops, okay. And uh, if somebody were to tap uh, the uh, traffic in between, and they probably can uh, were able to uh, sniff our packet and maybe can uh, can tamper our information or maybe can steal our information, okay. Right. So let's let's talk about the second type. Now, uh, let's say we encrypt something. Okay, so the second uh, generation is something like uh, we use the encryption. Yes, okay, encrypt. Um, so this is called symmetric key cryptography. Now, symmetric key cryptography basically means uh, we use the same key on both sides, right? So, so for example, if a user A decided to use uh, um, A B C one two three, uh, okay. Sorry about my. Uh, Typing here, um, so let's say user decide to use uh, ABC one two three, all right, and uh, user B will have to use the same um, uh, password, okay, ABC one two three, and uh, yeah, so then uh, this is called symmetric. So symmetric means uh, whatever key that we use on this side, uh, it will be the same on this side, okay. But um, so what's the problem? So before the communication starts, a key distribution method needs to be determined to ensure that no others can get the key. The person that intercepts the key can eavesdrop or maybe alter the data in during, in the transit. All right. So for n user, we can use this formula n times n minus one uh, divided by two. Keys to be negotiated. Okay, uh, so now th this this formula only applies when you have uh, more than two uh, two uh, party that needs to be communicated. For example, you have four parties. All right. So let's say you have four parties, and we want the the four parties to to have the symmetric key. So maybe uh, here to here we share one key, and this guy to this guy another key to be negotiate and share. And this party to this party another key to be negotiate, and this party to this party another key, and etc. etc. And and also from here to here. So based on this formula, you can actually apply for for example like four, uh, four parties, uh, multiplied by four minus three minus one, which is three, divided by two. So twelve divided by two, we ha we get six. So in other words, means we have one communication, two communication, three, four, five, six. So there are six uh, communication channels that needs to negotiate for the key, which is very, very troublesome. Okay. Um, and also another problem is that how do you get the key to the next person? Right? How do you send the key over? Through email? <laughs> or maybe through FTP or whatever it means. Uh, anyway, no matter how you send, there, there's also a possibility of somebody may may eavesdrop and uh, steal your key in in during the transit, right? So then we come to the the third type. Uh, we call it the encryption using the public key cryptography. Um, so public key cryptography goes like this. Okay, so every user, okay, uh, if you want to use the public key infrastructure, the PKI. Uh, so first of all. We will have to go through the key generation process. Okay, so during the key generation process, uh, we will have uh, you will ha come up with a pair of a key. Uh, we have a private key and we have the a public key. 
okay uh, yeah okay let's say I use uh, I use uh, X as, as a public okay and this key will then you need to share out you can share the public key uh, to anyone anyone uh, uh, can actually look at your key because it is supposed to be public and private key is something where you have to keep it you have to save it no matter how and you cannot expose your public key right so public and private key um, so so in this case you can actually share this key over to B because uh, and even though if C received your key if C gets the key it doesn't matter because when A before A sends something out to B first of all A will use its private key to encrypt that in the piece of information okay and then it will send over to uh, the next person so if the person wants to um, decrypt the, the, in, the, the piece of information and this person can actually use the public key of the A which you claim you, you encrypt from A and then to decrypt the piece of information and come up with the actual data okay this technology looks promising right uh, you have a private key and private key is something which you never never expose to people we have public key on the other hand it doesn't matter you get my public key what is the problem so the ne the problem here is that encryption is actually time consuming and encrypted data becomes lengthy okay definitely and although the encrypted data can be fragmented easily it is difficult to transmit okay so this is actually uh, the uh, the issue time consuming and also the uh, the data has become uh, maybe bigger um, so then after that we move to the next uh, type of uh, concept which is digital envelope so this digital envelope is actually a symmetric and public key cryptography okay so this digital envelope uses this technique uh, it's a symmetric now remember symmetric means uh, we are using the same key um, so so first of all we have a, a key for example ABC one two three right and uh, the sender will have to use the private key to actually encrypt this key encrypt the key okay so encrypt the key before you use the key to encrypt the information okay so and again when it comes to the receiving side uh, we will do the same thing okay uh, so on the opposite side, this guy will have to have to run the same same thing. Uh, also have uh, let's say the uh, the sh the same shared value, the key. They will also uh, using the public key of the user A, and then to to come up with the the actual key value. So this key value is the one that's supposed to be symmetric, and then they actually use the key to encrypt the data. And when the data go across the other side they use the same key value here to decrypt the data okay uh, so this is called the digital envelope um, so what was the problem the problem is that what happened if user C intercept the data from user A and user B and it tries to encrypt the forged information using its own symmetric key alright and it encrypts the symmetric key with users B public key and then send the encrypted key and cipher text to user B. So user B will decrypt the cipher key and consider that the data is actually sent by user A. So this uh, the, the the problem here is that um, so if let's say user C intercepts the uh, the, the communication, all right, and uh, user C tries to forge forge means to pretend. I'm a user A and uh, I'm using my key to do the uh, the encryption and then um, to 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 fake all right to fake to spoof that I'm actually uh, I pretend I'm I'm a, a. so the uh, user B might actually fell into the trap okay uh, because the question the, the the question here is that there is no means to actually verify the user okay you can claim you are from you know you are from the president of whatever country and uh, you know there's no way for us to verify whether that person is is really what he or she claim he is okay um, so this is actually good uh, using symmetric is faster 
right? Um, and but the the problem is that we cannot identify who is the the person. Okay, so this is where the digital signature comes in. Okay, um, so let's look at the digital signature. Digital signature is um, if somebody were to send something to you, um, they need to also include their di the digital signature. Okay, so um, so here is that um, the problem for digital signature is that user C altered the public key of uh, user B, and user A obtains uh, user C's public key. Okay. User C alters the public key of user B, and and uh, user B obtains the user C's public key, and user C intercepts the data from user B to A, and then signs the, the forged information with his own private key, and then send the forged information uh, in encrypted with user A's public key to user A. When receiving the information, user A decrypts it and confirms that the plain text is uh, it's not altered. And user A thinks that information is sent by user B. Okay, so this is how it works. So if user A tries to send uh, something to user B, okay. Now based on this method, uh, we come up with a, a solution, which is um, if user A want to send something to user B. So what I do is that first, first of all, user A will have to get the uh, public key of user B. All right. And this is to encrypt the the packet, yeah, the data. So when this information is then sent to user B, now user B can use its private key, yeah. In this case, we use P as a private key to decrypt, right? Now earlier we also mentioned the the problem, which is I, we cannot verify who who this, who this guy is. So what we can do here is that now instead of just sending the uh, uh, the encrypt and send it over. We can actually include something which is signature, digital signature. Okay, so digital signature is uh, a value, a calculated value, and uh, this key, the signature, are supposed to be using the private key of A to encrypt the signature. So now we have signature and together with the uh, message. And send it over to B. So when B receive, and B suppose uh, first of all B uh, are able to open up this uh, message, and uh, if B wants to know who is sending this message, and what B can do is that B can actually um, verify the signature, yeah, using A's public key to decrypt the signature. All right. So a's public key um, are only from A, right? But the question is that sometimes C, as a hacker, C, I can also forge A's signature. I can fill up all the information as if I'm A, right? So a good thing about digital signature is that yes, I can now verify that this guy's claim he's A. Uh, B when B receive, I use your, I use A's public key to decrypt the signature which is good but unfortunately this A could be a fake A it could be a C <laughs> okay All right so this is the reason why we come to the, the next stage which is the uh, PKI infrastructure now PKI infrastructure involve another third party yeah so this is the the reason so now everything have to be signed by the CA you know so uh, if if A uh, A's uh, signature, you know, has to be signed by C A, so B can actually go to C A and verify if this is co really coming from A. And if C tries to pretend you are from A, it's so easy. So once B check from the C A, and it knows that hey, this is not the signature from A, you are C, you know, and so B can actually uh, ignore the packet or maybe discard the packet. Okay. So this is actually the, the last step. So this is the reason why we need to talk about PKI, public key infra infrastructure. Um, uh, so we talk about the basic concept of PKI. PKI provides certificate management in compliance with certain standards. 
it uses public key to provide security services for all network appliance uh, application including appliances and uh, PKI is the basis of uh, e-commerce and is the core of information security all right so in today's uh, in today's world you can see that pretty much all of us uh, users we perform online shopping we perform a bank transaction uh, we purchase the share we buy and sell the share you know everything have to be really really secure e-commerce okay and uh, this is actually the core of our information security definitely right so let's look at the uh, PKI system uh, structure so what are the uh, elements uh, for a, a PKI system okay a PKI system consists of first of all and entity right so this is the one and entity sometimes you call EE and the next one is CA yeah CA we just mentioned certificate authority um, and also RA stands for registration authority okay this is the RA and then we also have the, uh, the database uh, we call it the certificate and the certificate revocation list database okay now uh, and and entity uh, okay a short in short we call EE is actually the, uh, the the party it could be a machine it could be a laptop it could be somebody uh, from a from a company where you want to connect back to your company's uh, VPN well, where, where you need to to have a certificate before making the connection uh, it could be a web server where you want to provide HTTPS a secure channel right uh, it, it could be any appliances like for example a firewall where you want to provide SSL VPN for your client all right so this is called end entity okay um, so there is a process of um, you know you have to download the certificate into this end, end entity or the EE to to perform the uh, installation right uh, we will talk about installation in uh, the, some of the, the, the steps uh, later on. We can also perform, we call it the out of band loading. Right? So, out of band loading means you can connect to the uh, uh, maybe a web portal and then you can download separately uh, into a USB disk or maybe USB stick or maybe send through email and then we can load into this guy. Okay? Um, so, um, and EE is also used to start the, the the process to apply for a new certificate or maybe to renew for a certificate okay uh, this this dotted line here is actually the uh, the portion of the PKI uh, end user and so typically this uh, request will then be sent to RA if the RA is available okay uh, again, what's RA? RA is actually the registration authority. Okay. Now, maybe in some countries or maybe in for some organization, um, before you you wanted to request a certificate, there's a whole bunch of process that you need to verify. You need to go through the uh, you know the workflow, uh, and you need to justify why do you need to request and things like that. Okay. So RA is that will be the one that is either approve or disapprove okay so let's say approve RA approve right so this approval will then go into the CA All right. so it's actually giving a green light to the CA says that hey CA you can now issue the certificate to the EE okay I've already checked all the documents he claimed he's from www.somethingsomething.com this guy is legit is valid you can actually issue the cert for him or maybe for example if, if this is a big organization um, and uh, any uh, d small department or maybe another d uh, maybe a subsidiary companies uh, they wanted to uh, apply a certificate through your uh, to, to the, the headquarters you know they say, the guy say okay this is approved and things like that so then the, the, the certificate will be issued and again how do they distribute um, it, it could be through out of band or it could be through uh, a, a direct uh, download into the the ent, uh, entity okay um, and also a, a, a copy of the digital certificate will then be stored in a database 
Okay, so this we also call this uh, certificate and also the CRL database. Now, certificate database is simple. Uh, every time the CA created something, certificate, it will store in, in the database. We call it the certificate database. And uh, the next one is called the revocation list, certificate re re revocation. So revocation comes from the word revoke. So which means once the uh, certificate has expired, so the uh, so uh, the CA will actually send a uh, will, will, will put a, a separate uh, a mark says that this certificate has expired, and if somebody would want to double check whether the certificate is still legit, whether it's uh, still valid, so once you you read from the CRL the database, boom, then the answer is there. Okay, it's it, it's either legit or it's either uh, expired or things like that. Uh, maybe in another situation is that where uh, if somebody uh, lost, for example, the EE, the EE loses the uh, private key. Now, if you lost your private key, this is a very serious man. <laughs> uh, private key. If you lose your private key, the only way to prevent other people from uh, mis misuse your key is to regenerate a new one. So you have to probably have to recreate a new, apply for a new certificate. But what about your old certificate, right? So you can actually. Uh, uh, go through the process to revoke your certificate. Revoke, okay. All right. So, um, but I think uh, in in, a, in most of the uh, CA uh, re request process will be sh mo most likely from this path, okay, which is uh, CA not available, okay. Oh, sorry, RA not available. Uh, sorry, my registration authority. Okay, some some a lot of uh, process uh, that. Uh, doesn't need to go through RA, so it, it went straight away to the CA. All right, so let's look at the uh, PKI life cycle. Okay, um, so PKI manage the entire life cycle of a local certificate, includes application, issue, storage, download, installation, authentication, renewal, and the revocation. Um, so normally we start from application. Okay. As, as I mentioned before, applications are typically have to be done at the EE, okay, the end entity, okay, and after that, the issue. So who's the one that issue? Yeah, CA is the one that issue, and uh, storage. Also, usually CA is the one that stores, and uh, download. Okay, and of course, this process has to be done uh, at the at the EE site. Okay, you have to download the cert, and then you need to install the cert. Okay, now if if this is a Microsoft machine. Uh, to install the cert, it will be um, probably as in, as easy as a double click, all right? And then after that, the um, uh, the authentication process is actually when you are using the cert. And renewal is actually like, for example, if you if you request a cert for let's say five years or maybe one year, and uh, before it expires, you probably have to go through the renewal process and uh, revocation. I just mentioned in the previous slide, all right? Yeah, so this is actually the uh, uh, certificate uh, applications. Just some um, point to discuss. Uh, generally, PKI entities generates the a pair of public and private key. Now again, uh, PKI entity means the EE, yeah, the end entity, end entity generates a pair of a public and a private key. Okay, I just mentioned before. Um, so remember, a pri private key is a key that you always keep uh, by yourself. And sometimes uh, uh, some of the generator allows the uh, EEE to actually uh, include a password, okay, to protect your private key. So every time you want to use your private key, uh, you have to type in your credential, the password, in order to open up the private key and to do something, okay. Um, so the public key. And the entity's um, identity information, such uh, included in the certificate uh, enrollment request, are then sent to the CA or maybe RA to generate a local certificate. The private key is that is stored by the PKI entity, which is the EE, and to perform digital signature and also to decrypt some of the cipher text sent by the peer. Okay. Now remember, I mentioned the the opposite flow. Um, to sign your digital signature, right? So let's say this is uh, machine A. Okay. Let me repeat this process uh, one more time. This is machine A. 
if machine A wants to send something to machine B. Right, so now we have a private key of A. Alright, and we have the public key of A. Alright, and we have also what? Private key of B. Alright, and we also have the public key of B. So let's assume we have both, uh, we have all these keys. Now, if A wants to send something to B, right, so A would actually use B's public key to encrypt this piece of information so that when B receives, B can open up with the B's private key, right? And uh, in terms of signature, A would have to sign the signature, his digital signature using his private key so that when he send over this packet to B B can actually verify using what? public key A to decrypt this piece of signature and to determine is this really coming from the person that he claims okay and uh, on top of this alright so with a CA things is actually a bit more complicated because all this key is not like you created your own key public and the private key and then you send to the next guy B hey B I'm gonna send this public key to you and things like no 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 <laughs> so you actually uh, will have to your key will have to be signed sorry your, 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 this is a certificate request you have to be signed by the CA and then the CA will then allow you to download what we call the local certificate okay then uh, based on the certificate, you can actually use a certificate for uh, to to do your all your other transaction. Okay, um, so uh, a PKI entity can either uh, use the online method or maybe the offline method uh, to apply for a local certificate from a CA. Okay, yeah. So some of the CA allows you almost instantly when you apply and uh, you get the. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, the cert the certificate uh, straight away, or maybe sometimes you have to go through a process where after you generate the uh, uh, cert certificate request enrollment request, and then uh, you have to attach with the email with probably some other uh, supporting documents, and uh, before you send it over to your CA. So after CA verify everything, uh, CA approve, and then CA will sign the the digital certificate, your local certificate and then the CA will then send back to you by email. So this is called offline method, okay?